There we go. All right, hey guys, this is a uh, first, I guess, post Air Force update. It's been, let's see, it's February. I separated November 6th last year. Uh, I was on terminal leave for 28 days, so I final outed 28 days before November 6th, which was pretty awesome. It gave me more time to job hunt, look for a job. I had several opportunities, several interviews. I eventually settled on a agricultural mechanic for a company just a town over, basically. But it had the best uh, starting pay, which is a very important thing because I didn't want to be working for peanuts when I got you know two kids and a wife and bills and all that crap to keep in line. Um, we also lucked out, we got really lucky, found a four bedroom house in my hometown. And so it's, it's a rental, of course, we don't have that kind of money to own our own place just yet, but it is what it is. I'm fine with that for now, especially for the rate that we're paying for it monthly. Uh, pretty obvious things that have changed my appearance. People have definitely noticed that. I'm definitely a veteran now because uh, I have this this thing on my face. People keep noticing that first. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was about the first thing that I wanted to do when I got out of the service. Like, I couldn't wait to get out because then you don't have to shave every day. After six years of shaving every single flipping day, it was, it's nice not to pick up a razor every flipping day. You know? Let the hair grow a little bit, you know. It's, it's, it's what it is. I'm noticing a lot more gray in my hair but I blame my kids for that uh, besides that let's see I uh, got rid of my Dakota well when I say got rid of it uh, I actually traded it I traded my 2001 Dodge Dakota quad cab for a 2003 Ford Ranger it's pretty much just a base model single cab short bed uh, two three four cylinder with a uh, five-speed trans two-wheel drive but it only had like 106,000 miles on it when I got it which that's a lot less the Dakota had 170 two three something like that 72 three four something like that so I got something that you know has freaking 60,000 miles less on it which uh, yeah yes please uh, I'll be making a video to that pretty soon. I haven't done too much to it yet. When I got it, the kid who had it before me put aftermarket rims on it. They're kind of like uh, American Racing knockoffs, but they still look good. Uh, it has like 235, 75 tires on it. Those look pretty good too. Uh, tinted windows, uh, aftermarket headlights. It was a reconstructed title, so uh, one fender actually says Ranger XLT, and the other side says Ranger, but... I don't care. It's whatever. It's a beater truck. But it, it's, a, it's a pretty nice beater truck. It's rust free. That was another big selling point for me. Because the Dakota, it was starting. I needed to replace the one fender that I had. I just had never put it on. The rockers were starting to get more holes in them on the driver's side. Uh, let's see. Well, the only thing that I've done to the Ranger is different radio speakers sub behind the passenger seat because it's single cab. I'm not putting one behind mine. <laughs> Uh, side pipe exhaust. I kept the resonator but took out the muffler and it sounds just right. And it passed inspection that way. I'm not saying I know a guy but he considered the resonator a muffler. <laughs> it still has the cat and all that past emissions so technically it's illegal. Um, wife's still driving her car. Same Hyundai Elantra Touring. I think uh, if there's anything else crazy going on. Like I said, uh, agriculture mechanic, uh, I average at the minimum 50 hours a week. I get paid every two weeks, so every two weeks, 100 hours. But lately I've been getting, you know, 120, 130 hours a week. And that makes for a really decent paycheck because, I mean, after 40, well, after 80 hours because I get paid every two weeks. After 80 hours, I get time and a half. That is the biggest thing that I was happy to have when I got out of the military was hourly pay. So, I'm pretty much working the same hours that I did, military-wise, but 
I'm getting paid for it. It's not salaried. I'm not getting the same flat paycheck. So that part's nice. So the more you work, the more you're getting paid to work. Um, other than that, I mean, that's, in a nutshell, that's everything that's changed. Being back in Pennsylvania, my hometown, working as an agriculture mechanic. And as far as that entails, uh, I work on pretty much anything that deals with feeding cows uh, and manure management. So it's either I'm dealing with what goes in the cow or what comes out of the cow. <laughs> Some days are quite literally shittier than others. But I'm not complaining. I'm actually pretty blessed to have a job like that because it's I'm learning a crap ton of things. No pun intended. But uh, hey, my kids' stomachs are full. The bills are paid. I'm doing what I have to. Um, other than that, my son starts kindergarten this next coming school year. Both my kids are in preschool, and it's actually the church right next to my house, which is, coincidentally, we're renting this house through that church, which is actually pretty cool. And it definitely is cheaper having my kids just walk across to preschool since it's right next door. Uh, other than that, I mean, I've been going, I go to a different church down the road. And our pastor there, he's pretty pretty laid back, pretty chill. I like him. Uh, I didn't really go to church at all when I was in the military because, eh, I mean, you just didn't have any drive to do anything on the weekend unless you're on weekend duty. Uh, people have been asking me, like, do I regret getting out? Uh, do I miss the job or anything? And I say yes and no. I mean, most of all, you're going to say that you miss it, but then you think about it. The only thing you actually miss about the job was the people that you worked with. You don't miss the actual job, or at least speaking for myself, I do not miss the job, especially when I was on the flight line. Those long, grueling hours, you know, coming home smelling of grease and hydraulic fluid and all that. But when I was in support, I mean, I actually made some pretty good friends, and I still keep in contact with them. Nowadays, I still come home kind of smelly, but it's a different kind of smell. But it is what it is. And I'm definitely glad I kept all my coveralls and stuff from the Air Force because I'm using them right now. My winter weights in this cold-ass winter that we're having in Pennsylvania, those are definitely paying for themselves. Uh, but yeah, other than that, that's pretty much in a nutshell, just if anyone's curious about how I'm doing outside of the military doing pretty well I mean I'm not saying I'm a millionaire but bills are paid we're getting what we need and a little extra and you know what what more can you ask for besides actually owning my own house but that probably is not going to be for another several years down the road till me and my wife are both working and that won't be till both our kids are in school at least you know all day so at least first grade for my youngest my daughter she's three now so still got a couple years but yeah, if anyone has any question about, you know, if you're thinking of joining the Air Force or if you're thinking of getting out and all that and you want to ask me any kind of questions about how hard it was to, you know, find a job or what you do on the outside or how you enlist or what you should do before you enlist, just, you know, send me a message, leave a comment, whatever you want to do. I'll be happy to help. It's still kind of fresh in my mind, so hopefully I can help someone. But, I mean, I'm, I'm glad I'm out. But other than that, I keep saying but. <laughs> Main perk for me was D214 beard. <laughs> All right. Well, till then, guys.